Hey guys, we're back with another BioLane video log, and today we're going to talk a little bit about reverse dieting. Now, in my last video log, I, uh, I brought up a reverse dieting, but really, you can't watch this video log until you watch the other one, uh, why your weight loss diet might be making you fatter, <laughs> why your weight loss diet might be making you fatter, and uh, I really recommend going and watching that, understanding the data in there, and then, and then we can kind of talk about this. Now, reverse dieting is a, a little more hypothetical. This is uh, something that uh, you really, at least I know of, not many studies looking at it uh, or any. Um, this is more my experience with my clients. Uh, but what is it? Uh, so, reverse diet, we talked about the problems with typical dieting, with crash dieting. A lot, a lot of what happens is you get this disconnect between your metabolic rate. And your body fat level over time, in that by really chronically restricting calories interspersed with, you know, massive overfeeding, um, you actually get uh, more body fat gain with a, and you have a slowly a lowering of your metabolic rate over time, uh, making it harder and harder to lose weight the more and more times you you go through this process. Again, I'm not gonna, my I'm I'm. There's a whole uh, video series on the, the metabolic adaptation, and then obviously this this last video I did. Please watch those. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, beat a dead horse. <laughs> um, so a lot of people ask, well, what, what, what? How do we avoid this? What, what can we do? Well, I, first off, it's important to understand that a certain amount of metabolic adaptation is normal when you diet. Okay, y your body is going to attempt to maintain homeostasis. Your metabolism is going to slow down. That's normal, okay? The problem gets to be when there's kind of a long-term disconnect. When you, because typically what happens is, if you diet down, it takes you 12, 16 weeks to get however lean you want, and then slowly over time, if you put that body fat back on, typically what happens is your metabolic rate goes back up to where it was before. Uh, so it's not a problem. You can lose it again uh, because you have that same metabolic rate. Uh, the problem becomes when you diet how a lot of people diet, which is crash diet, really lower your metabolic rate very drastically, and then you put all the weight back on very quickly um, because your metabolism doesn't have time, your metabolic rate hasn't had time to catch up. Just because you put on 30 pounds in a month or two months or whatever, it's not the same thing as it taking you know 16 weeks for it to strip it off of you. It takes time to recover that. So when we talk about reverse dieting, basically what we're talking about is after a diet, very slowly adding calories back in, in order to in order to um, regain, restore your metabolic rate uh, while minimizing body fat gain. Okay, that's really what we want. We want to get our metabolic rate back up to par without gaining uh, unnecessary amount of body fat. And so we're talking about this this uh, catch-up time for our metabolic rate, okay? Again, one of the biggest problems is not that people put on fat post-diet, um, because again, if you kept, if somebody kept chronically overfeeding uh, after a diet, eventually uh, your metabolic rate catches back up. And this is actually shown, there was a study in, uh, in, in rats where, uh, and, and before anybody knocks rodent research, realize that there are certain things you just can't do in humans, okay? You can't perfectly control calories in humans. It's just, it's very difficult. But rats, you can, you can control everything. So they looked at rats and they looked at if they either had them do yo-yo dieting, okay, gain and lose weight multiple times, uh, versus just chronically overfeeding them, okay, over a long period of time. And look at, at the end, even though both groups over the entire course of this time, overall the calorie intake was the exact same. But one group yo-yo dieted up and down, and one group just kind of chronically overfed. Uh, the group that yo-yo dieted at the end had significantly more body fat. Okay, And my hypothesis would be because during those periods of underfeeding, you're lowering your metabolic rate, and the periods of overfeeding, you're putting the body fat back on, but during the periods of overfeeding, you're not giving, they're not giving enough time to restore metabolic rate. So when they go to try and drop the weight again, again, it gets more and more difficult over time, which many of you know because uh, thousands of you have contacted me and told me, 
hey, this is what's happened to me. You know, uh, the first time I tried to drop body fat, I had no trouble losing. And the more and more I try to do it, the more and more trouble I have. So what do we need to do? Well, in my opinion, reverse dieting is one of the best things you can do after a diet in order to restore your metabolic rate without putting on unnecessary body fat. So what we want to do is go slow enough that we give our body time to catch up. So we talked about, we talked about last time how if you do this kind of yo-yo dieting over time, you can create this, 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 this um, problem, this disconnect between your metabolic rate and your body fat level, where your body fat level is higher, but your metabolic rate is still low. Okay, we don't want that. What we actually would like to create is the other disconnect where your, your metabolic rate is higher and your body fat is lower. Okay, so if we talk about kind of a hypothetical chart of progress, and if we have, ah, it's always trouble for me to get this centered because it's like a mirror. Um, if we have, you know, our period of restriction here and we have metabolic rate, calorie intake, and body fat all kind of going down Similarly, this is again hypothetical chart of progress. Okay, so nothing's ever this perfect. And then once we hit our goal and we start to come, we decide to come back up and raise calories. If we do it slow enough, hopefully we raise metabolic rate, limiting body fat gain, but restoring our, our metabolic rate, and maybe even able to create some of this positive disconnect. Okay, so you see here higher metabolic rate, but still putting on a little bit of body fat, but still lower. Okay, and uh, I've seen this happen with a number of people, with 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 actually uh, dozens of people. And I'm going to show, I want to show some case studies here uh, later in the video uh, of people I've I've worked with. Um, and we, you can you can see the the outcomes. So we want to create that positive disconnect. At the very least, we want to get metabolic rate back up to normal while gaining a minimal amount of body fat. So if we're talking about after a diet. Where do we start? Okay. Well, what I typically do is at the end of, uh, end of somebody's diet, I'm going to add anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of of calorie of of I'm going to add I'm going to on their carb and fat intake I'm going to up that by 10 to 20 percent. So if somebody's eating 100, let's say like we, we get somebody comes to us like a lot of these girls <laughs> they're they're really low calorie, um, but let's say they're 100 grams of carbs and 30 grams of fat. Not terrible. Okay, not terrible by the end of a diet. Well, I'll say, well, let's start out at, you know, 120 grams of carbs and 35 grams of fat. Uh, something like that, you know, 10 to 20 percent. And then every week going forward, we'll increase those macros, those carbs and fats, by around 2 to 5 percent. And I typically don't increase protein simply for the fact that most people are already eating enough protein if they're into fitness and most are over consuming protein. Uh, if you're getting one gram per pound, that, that's you're you're good to go. Uh, there's no research that shows anything over one gram per pound is uh, is is more beneficial. Um, now, if you get to the point where you get to macronator status, that we call it, when you're when you're uh, a crazy metabolic rate because you've done this stuff right, like uh, I had a client uh, Noah Chang who was up to maintaining his body weight around 700 grams of carbs per day in his off season. Uh, we had we increased his protein intake just for the simple fact that we wanted to keep his, his macros in a reasonable balance because you know he's 200 pounds consuming 220 grams of protein but 700 grams of carbs so eventually we increased protein a little bit just because he was getting so much protein just as a byproduct of his carb intake so you have to keep that in, in terms of balance but for the most part for normal non macronator human beings. <laughs> Uh, additions of the kind of two to five percent of carbs and fats per week uh, are, are going to be helpful. So, uh, how do you know how much? Well, you know, there's. I don't like to tell people to get so hung up on the scale, but the scale is one measure of progress. And I always usually have people take pictures and also take like waist measure waist measurements and hip measurements, those sorts of things, and. Um, you know, so if things look like they're going well, um, we're, we're minimizing body fat gain, the scale's not moving, that sort of thing, uh, I'll be a little bit more aggressive, okay? So maybe I'll add 5%. So if somebody's at up to 200 grams of carbs per day, okay, well, we'll, we'll add 10 grams of carbs and 2 grams of fat that week, something like that. Or if somebody's, you know, up 300 grams of carbs and they're maintaining their body weight or maintaining their body fat, they're really not putting on any, okay, well, let's go like 15 grams of carbs and 3 or 4 grams of fat. Right, we'll add. And so, 
it may seem like, wow, you know, that's, that's such a small amount. Like, even if you're do, like doing what, like, like, what if we're doing 2% of, you know, a, a, a small amount? Well, we're only at, maybe we only add 5 grams of carbs in a week and a, and a gram of fat. Well, that seems like nothing. But if you did that every week for a year, that would be 250, uh, 260 grams of carbs and 52 grams of fat you would add to your diet. And if we did it right, hopefully with minimal body fat gain. And so, by, by doing this slow, you give your metabolism time to catch up, you give it time to recover, and you minimize that body fat gain. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to gain any body fat. And I found that um, many people uh, respond to reverse dieting differently. But some people are hyper-responders, I, I, and I'll, I'll show you some, some images of that. Uh, but one thing I want to talk about too is the transition phase, which is right after you stopped your diet, right before you begin your reverse diet. Okay, we may, we may only be talking about 24 hours here, but let's just take a competitor after a show. I've seen people put on enormous amounts of body fat for a relatively small time frame, 5 and 10 pounds of legit body fat in a 24 hour period. Uh, and I'll have people say, oh, there's no way you can put that much on. <laughs> uh, I've seen it. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, but I've seen it. And um, your body, when your metabolism, metabolic rate's that low, uh, you become a fat storage machine. I mean, I, I've talked about the metabolic adaptations of, you know, increasing lipogenic genes, um, decreasing genes dealing with lipolysis, so it can happen. So the transition phase is really critical. Um, and, and the biggest thing is to have a plan. Okay, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, when I competed before, I, was, I would get very lean, and I would always binge after a show because I would just be like, man, I can't wait to have this, 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 and this. And I didn't really have a plan. I was just going to go out and, and eat. You know what I mean? And uh, this last time I competed back in 2010, uh, when I got my leanest ever, I said, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm not putting on 10 pounds in a day. It's just it's miserable, and I want to start my reverse diet off right. And so what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to go out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some pizza with my friends, I'm going to eat until I'm full, until I feel physically full, not psychologically, but physically, and then I'm going to stop, okay? But I'm going to go out, I'm going to enjoy myself, and I, I'm, but I'm not going to binge. So I went out, and uh, I did that, and we went out and had deep dish Chicago-style pizza, which anybody who's had uh, Giordano's deep dish Chicago-style pizza knows that uh, one slice of pizza is extremely filling. Well, I, I ate two slices and I was full. I had two slices and a beer and I was like, that's it. And I was satisfied. Uh, I got what, to eat what I wanted to eat and I didn't feel guilty because I still stuck to my plan. So was I up a couple pounds the next day? Yeah, I was up like two pounds. But compared to other years, whew, way better. And I put myself in a much better position to start because I didn't have that guilt associated with, with kind of a massive cheat afterwards. Okay? And I think that's really important. I, th I th where people get in trouble is kind of this, this uh, um, uh, starve, binge, guilt, punish, starve cycle. Okay, so they, they eat very low calories, it triggers a binge eventually, they feel guilty for that, so they go back to starving themselves and punishing themselves with hours of cardio. You gotta break that cycle and break the reverse gain cycle. The other thing that's important is to keep uh, so, so you want to relax your diet without binging, okay? That's the point. It, it's during that transition phase, you want to relax the diet, you want to enjoy yourself, but you don't want to promote some kind of binge. That, that's the important part. And then, obviously, once that's over, time to start your reverse diet, okay? And I will say, the first few weeks of a reverse diet sometimes can be just as hard as the actual diet itself because you're, you're now kind of... You're, you want to eat, you, you, you know your diet's over or whatever it is, and the psychological drive to eat will be very great. But if you tough it out for the first you know, four or six weeks, it really pays dividends down the roads in terms of your physique and your metabolism. And, and, and insofar as um, you will have minimal body fat gain with, with helping to restore your metabolic rate. Uh, but in training is very important too. I think one of the worst things you can do is, and I see it a lot, is people will get ready for a show or whatever, and they're like, okay, I'm going on vacation afterwards. So, so you're telling me you're going to go on vacation where you're not going to train and you're, you're going to have access to all this food. That's going to end well. 
not. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying people should never go on vacation or anything like that, but I don't think it should be right after you're done dieting for something. Um, the, the research shows that by continuing to train hard, you actually attenuate a lot of the body weight gain that accompanies uh, a post-diet regain, okay? So it's important to continue training hard. Um, now, I'm not saying keep doing all the cardio you're doing. As you know, uh, I'm not big on a lot of cardio. Um, I, I recommend people cutting out most of their you know, low-intensity cardio and, and doing maybe a few high-intensity interval sessions a week. But again, that depends on how much you've been doing during your actual diet. Um, and as you add calories in, maybe you start to get some of the, you get to realize positive metabolic adaptation. So we've talked about metabolic adaptation in the negative sense in terms of lowering your metabolic rate. But as you add in uh, calories, you will add it, you will get a higher metabolic rate over time. Um, and you kind of got to make those changes on how your body responds. Like I said, you know, anywhere from that two to five percent per week tends to be kind of like a good, a good area to go off of. But again, I'm just generalizing and I've seen every response out there, okay? So um, don't, what I'm saying is not like set in stone. These are just my experiences and, and my best advice I can give you, uh, not being able to work with each of you individually. Uh, if, you're, if you're kind of not regaining weight very fast uh, or not at all or you're even losing some weight, you can probably get a little more aggressive with your calorie increases. Uh, if you're gaining weight too fast, um, maybe you uh, be more conservative or you hold calorie steady for a few weeks, give your body time to adjust to that calorie level. Um, some other considerations uh, we talked about, you want to hold protein constant. Um, I would slowly taper cardio, so if you're doing uh, seven sessions, two double sessions every single day, I wouldn't recommend going down to just two hit sessions a week. I would probably kind of taper it down over like a six week period to the point to where you're down to, you know, maybe like three uh, sessions a week or something like that. Uh, and, and really, the best thing you can do is continue to resistance train hard. That hard resistance training causes uh, muscle damage, it causes protein turnover, which is, inter which is ATP, energetically expensive, and uh, will help with your metabolic rate. So those are, are very, very important. Um, and then once you kind of have recovered your metabolic rate, you know, you get up into the, you know, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 calories a day and you're maintaining your weight, you know, you're back to normal. Uh, that doesn't mean you should stop with the reverse diet. Uh, I really try to push as many calories in as I can to people and really max out their metabolic capacity. And I've talked about that in another video. So you really, because if you can get somebody to the point, like a, a, a Noah Chang, who I'm, I'm actually going to show here, uh, in a few minutes, uh, his 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 uh, his reverse diet. But before he started his prep and his reverse diet that he's on now, I had him. He was. I mean, his metabolism was already very fast. But we kept trying to push calories in slowly over time to really max it out. And he was, like we said, maintaining his body weight on almost 5,000 calories a day. So it made his prep very easy. I mean, uh, his his depletion. His like low, lowest carb day was 200 grams of carbs per day. That was like his carb depletion, you know? So uh, by, by investing um, in your, your metabolic capacity, uh, it's gonna pay dividends when it comes to, to, to dieting down. And I also look at, people have the wrong impression. A lot of, I've got a lot of people come to me for reverse dieting and they'll say, you know, I wanna drop 20 pounds of body fat. It's like, well, no, you're missing the point of reverse dieting. <laughs> reverse dieting is to set you up so set you up metabolically so that when you go into an active fat loss phase, you can be successful with it. But the main goal of reverse dieting is not fat loss in the short term. The main goal is to restore your metabolic rate so when you go into an active fat loss phase, it can be effective. Okay? So, um, uh, that, that's what you see is when you really push that, meta, that metabolic capacity, that metabolic rate, it makes it much easier. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a investment in your metabolic future. Think about it that way. Um, but again, the main goal, I've had people say, oh, you know, I didn't lose any, like uh, um, I worked with, uh, I, I've been working with uh, 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 Bikini Pro and, uh, you know, she did really well. She was like a hyper responder to, uh, to the reverse diet. And uh, she lost about, right around about eight pounds uh, over about a six month period but she took her carbon intake from like 160 grams a day to like 350 grams a day 
and lost eight pounds doing that over that time period. But she would email me sometimes and like her weight wouldn't change or it would go up by a pound and fluctuate. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm doing wrong. I said, well, you're not doing anything wrong, you know, and that's okay. You know, the main goal is just to kind of minimize body fat gain while you add these calories in. And the fact that she actually lost body fat was, was nothing but a, a bonus, okay? So now I want to show you some pictures of people that I've worked with. Uh, this first one is uh, Simone Sinclair. She's an IFBB Bikini Pro. And uh, we, I kind of started working with her and actually started, started working with her and reversing her, she was very low calorie even in her off season. Uh, she had come from uh, a pretty big team who usually, usually have people go uh, pretty low calorie. And uh, so I was increasing her calories. Didn't get her near where I wanted to get her uh, in her off season because I only had a short time with her. But she, she wanted to do some spring shows. She had her heart set on that. So we, we got her ready. And this first picture of her in the red suit, uh, we had to get her down pretty low. I mean, she was on around 75 grams a day and 25 grams of fat. That's, that's pretty low. And she was doing, I think, three or four days a week of high-intensity intervals. Um, what, that, that, in that show, she won her pro card in the red suit. And then we started uh, reverse dieting her after that show. Okay, So we started slowly adding in calories. My, my thought was actually I was going to reverse diet her for six weeks, and then I was going to go back and put her in active fat loss phase for the next six weeks. But the funny thing happened is we, we kept adding in calories, and she kept getting leaner. <laughs> so she ended up competing at her first uh, pro show three months later, uh, eating 100 grams more carbs per day and 15 grams more fat and was significantly leaner as you can see. So uh, this is the guy I've been kind of talking about, Noah Chang. So he he started his, the, the diet like I talked about as a am eating, you know, 700 grams of carbs per day, something like that. Uh, and by the end, you know, we had to get, you know, pretty aggressive considering how high his calories are or were. So he ended his diet on around 260 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, and uh, 60 grams of fat. And uh, now you can see um, he's just as lean or probably even a little bit leaner uh, eating, uh, this is actually a couple months ago, the, the, these figures, uh, but he was eating 215 grams of car, uh, protein, 440 grams of, of carbs, and then 78 grams of fat. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome that he stayed, essentially stage lean and uh, more than doubled his carbohydrate intake and significantly increased his fat intake as well. Uh, this is Angelique Costa. And uh, so she, she, there's a little bit of story, backstory with this because if you look at it, uh, the before and after is about the same calorie intake. But that's over, this is over the course of a year. This is actually a nice showing what, what happens with a reverse diet. So, we started her out and she was on, uh, again, she, she was kind of a part of a, of, a, of a team that typically goes pretty lower carb. Uh, this was her off-season intake, 200 grams of, of protein and 120 grams of carbs. So I was like, yeah, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> um, so we slowly started increasing her calories. I think we had her up to right around 300 grams of carbs a day. And then once she was up to that point, uh, she basically maintained her weight. I think she even dropped just a little bit uh, during that time. She maintained her weight. And uh, then we started uh, uh, bringing her back down. We put her into an active fat loss phase. And that's this picture that on the right that you see. This was at the end of her active fat loss phase diet. This is like a 20-week diet. So she got down to 160 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs, and 40 grams of fat. Um, but look how much leaner she is. I mean, she was, she, I think she dropped like, uh, you know, 15 pounds or something like that. But again, significantly leaner and uh you know, with, 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 uh, you can see here kind of the long-term benefit of a reverse diet. Uh, this is Danielle Dom, and, uh, she's, uh, definitely a hyper responder to reverse dieting. And, um, she, uh, she started and she came to me at 130 grams of carbs a day and 70 grams of fat, which I, I actually lowered her fat intake a little bit compared to her carb just because I thought it was a little bit out of balance. Um, but over the course of, uh, over the course of about, I think this is like five or six months, I mean, check it out. You know, she's up to 305 grams of carbs per day, and she basically lost 10 pounds during this time period, okay? Uh, and you can see in the pictures, uh, significantly leaner, uh, especially in her stomach and arm area. So, again, uh, she's kind of a hyper-responder um, uh, to reverse dieting, which is really cool to see. This is not... 
I wouldn't say this is a typical response. This is definitely kind of atypical uh, of reverse dieting. Uh, typically, you get kind of maintenance of weight or, or, or slight gains, but uh, you know, it's nice to know that some people do have this response. Uh, this is Brad Peterson. Uh, before, uh, when he finished up his diet, got you know very lean, uh, 240 grams of protein, 130 grams of carbs, and 43 grams of fat, and uh, that was the end of his diet. Uh, what he finished up with, and uh, you know, got very lean. Um, but, you know, reverse dieted them uh, very effectively and now up to uh, 305 grams of carbs per day and 60 grams of fat and uh, probably a little bit of body fat gain, but not, not a whole lot there. So, and again, if you look at this, if you see the difference in uh, the, 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 the body fat gain, um, that, 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 yes, he probably gained a little bit of body fat, but are we willing to trade that, that, that little body fat gain for the amount of metabolic rate we're getting back? And the answer is yes, absolutely. And uh, here's uh, another client of mine. And he started off at, uh, he ended his diet on 240 grams of protein, 90 grams of carbs, and 35 grams of fat. So that's about, his, uh, we had to get pretty aggressive with him. And uh, it was his first show. And uh, now he's up to 470 grams of carbs a day and 85 grams of fat. And yes, he's added some weight. He's added about, uh, I think, a little bit under 10 pounds, something like that. Maybe right at 10 pounds. And yes, he's added some body fat. But the, the question is, if you look at this and say, um, is, was it worth it? The answer is yes, because he'll be able to drop that 10 pounds very easily because of now of how much he maintains his weight at, because of how fast his metabolism is. Okay, so again, this is kind of more of a, of, a, of, a, of a typical response to reverse dieting, I would say. So again, some people will look at this and say, well, he gained body fat. Well, yes, but look how much metabolic rate he got in exchange for that. Okay, so that's an important distinction. And here's a, here's a long-term kind of case study. My client, uh, Lori Piper, she's been with me for three years. And uh, the, the, there's confounding variables here uh, because obviously this is after several reverse dieting diet cycles, then reverse dieting again. I think this is through uh, four different dieting and then reverse dieting cycles. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure people will look at this and say, you know, oh, there's something else going on there. But, you know, Lori is a, is a IFPA drug-free pro. And, uh, you know, this first picture, you know, she wasn't really training uh, correctly. You know, second picture, you see squats, deadlifts, you know, heavy lifting, uh, really made a big difference in her physique. And uh, the other thing, too, is we fed her. You know, you can see when, we, when she started, uh, very low calorie intake. And, you know, now the, the difference is, um, you know, in the off season, we had her up in the 250, almost 300 gram of carb intake. But uh, you can see that now um, in that picture, she ended her, her diet on a much higher calorie intake than she had to end her diet before and she was significantly leaner and you also can see what what feeding your physique does over time in terms of muscle gain you know I have so many women that get very focused on the scale well Lori <laughs> absolutely put on weight and she's absolutely heavier in that second photo but uh, looks better you know so it's a, it's a big distinction and then finally one of the one of the better cases I've seen of, uh, of reverse dieting is uh, Rasmus here who ended his diet on around 175 grams of carbs per day. He was a macronator in the off season. He was up to, you know, 600-ish grams of carbs per day, maintaining his weight. And, uh, but he finished his diet around 175, had to get pretty aggressive, and he got very lean, very lean there. But check out now that he's eating 350 grams of carbs and 80 grams of fat per day. And again, that's not him just jumping up to that. That's slowly adding that over time. Um, he's leaner now than when he stepped on stage. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's almost like we wish we would have known we'd had this response, so now we know for next time. But, I mean, he can walk on stage right now, and I mean, just, you know, completely shredded. So, again, uh, I, I didn't do this to brag, uh, but these are people I know, uh, case studies I can present to you. So you guys just don't have to look and say, okay, well, all that stuff's fine in theory, but does it work? And the answer is yes, it, it does work, and it can work. Um, now, again, everybody responds differently. Some people are hyper-responders to reverse dieting, and they get leaner over time doing it. And some people put on a little bit of body fat. But again, the question is not, did I put on body fat? The question is, um, was I able to you know, you know, get more 
metabolic rate in exchange for that body fat gain. And as long as you're getting a significant increase in metabolic rate with minimal body fat gain, uh, then it's worth it. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys in terms of better understanding reverse dieting and what it all entails. Um, uh, Sohi Lee and myself are going to start work on a uh, on an ebook possibly about this sort of thing um, because uh, we've had a lot of requests about it. People don't really understand it. And, but hopefully this video is, uh, provides some free information for you guys that uh, that is helpful. And uh, as always, please uh, like the video if you actually like it, <laughs> and uh, click subscribe because it helps. And uh, thank you guys for your support. Uh, looking forward to uh, to a great, another great year. Thanks.